or sulfur falls right below oxygen. So that SH group is a lot like the OH group. And if you look at these thiols in their chemical formulas, they're even written as SH, like OH. They have a foul smell and they're used as odorants by skunks and gas companies so that you can smell a gas leak. It turns out that the natural gas that comes into our homes has no scent and we couldn't smell it if it weren't for the thiol that was added to it. Thiols are also found in onions. They're really stinky. Next, I'd like to talk about the carbonyl group. The carbonyl group is simply the C double bonded to an O. A carbonyl group is found in all of these different functional groups. This C double bonded to the O is going to have a similar property every time. The oxygen is more electronegative, pulling the electrons towards it, making this area more negative. In addition to that, the oxygen has these lone pairs, which are going to also add to the negativity of that area. In aldehydes, the carbonyl group is terminal, which means it's at the end. And in ketones, it is in the interior. So we'll look at that more specifically in a second. Carbonyl groups are found in many industries, food chemicals, natural, artificial, fragrance, medicines, medicines and agricultural chemicals. Here's some examples. Here's lemon, lemongrass, here's vanilla in, which is the scent from the vanilla beans, octanone, which is mushroom flavoring, and uh, there's berry flavoring. And in each and every one of these, you can see the different carbonyl groups. If you're sitting in my classroom, the first sign to the right of my TV is blue and red, and that is the aldehydes. The, alde the aldehydes have um, an R group, a C, and then an H. So the simplest of the aldehydes is this one right here called methanal, or commonly known as formaldehyde. Made from the oxidation of methanol, it is embalming fluid, reacts with proteins to harden them. It's an extreme irritant, disinfectant, and a suspected carcinogen. So now they actually use a different type of embalming fluid for, for bodies. It's used as a monomer to make many plastics. In this case, formica is made from formaldehyde. And here's some examples of aldehydes. Here's benzaldehyde. There's the C double bonded to the O with an H, and then here's the R group. Cinnamon aldehyde, here's the R group, and the C and the O and the H, and vanilla in, the C, the H, and then this entire thing is the R group. Some aromatic aldehydes have pleasant fragrances, like those three. The next functional group I wanna to talk to you about is the ketones. Acetone is the simplest of the ketones. That would be a carbon bonded to a carbon, a carbonyl group, and then another carbon. And these, of course, are going to be CH3s on either side. So that's acetone. Acetone is a simple ketone that is dissolves in both water and organic compounds. It's used in nail polish remover. That's that smell that you're always smelling and a solvent for different resins, paints, and dyes. Other ketones include camphor, has a, a super specific smell that you may recognize. Muscone, that's, the, that's when someone's wearing musk cologne, that's the musk glands of the deer for perfumes. And jasmine, or the oil of jasmine. And then finally, carvone, which is spearmint oil right here. So you can see here that ketones also have certain spells, smells. Some people describe the smells of ketones as more spicy or kind of like Vicks Vapor Rub. They all kind of have a similar smell. Taking a look more closely at that carbonyl group, remember we have a C double bonded to an O. So this is the carbonyl group. 
And this is what it looks like when we look at it up close. We have this bond right here. That is the sigma bond or the first of the bonds. And then above and below the internuclear axis, that is the pi bond, um, which I, I do have written here. Those are called the pi bonds. So the bond itself is not able to rotate. And the oxygen, like I mentioned before, has these lone electron pairs. So it's a double, bone, double bond composed of a sigma pi bond. And the pi bond is the one that is more active to breaking open. The carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized, which is going to make this 120 degree bond angle. So right here, here, and here, that's that 120 degree bond angle. The bond is highly polarized, and this is in every instance. You can think about these as being polar bonds every time. This is, effect is especially pronounced for the less firmly held pi electrons. That's, again, these guys. So they're what makes it so polar. And much of the chemistry of aldehydes and ketones involve reactions that attack these pi bonds. Here's just a few that I'd like you to understand. The nucleophiles, so let's break that word apart. That is nucleo, like nucleus, and file means to love. These are the nucleus loving. The nucleus is positive, so they love positive things. That's why they are negative, because they love positive things. They are electron supplying reagents. They're negative ions or species with unshared electron pairs like oxygen that we were just talking about. They really like the positive carbon in that pi bond and they're after to attack any positive part. So ammonia, amines, these contain nitrogen with unpaired electrons and oxygen with two unpaired electrons and those are what create the nucleophiles the electrophiles are the opposite of that if you break down that word you've got electro like electrons file like loving these are the electron loving so they are negative loving things and that means that they are positive. They are seeking electrons. So they are cations. Remember, those are positive ions or electron deficient species, um, things that don't have enough electrons. For example, uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen, even hydrogen or hydrogen ions are both seeking electrons because of that positive nucleus and the negative outside they like the negative oxygen of the um, carbonyl group. So nucleophiles attach to the carbon because the carbon has a partial positive cha charge and the electrophiles attach to the oxygen. The pi electrons move towards the more electronegative oxygen and is often pronated Pronated just means that it's going to become more positive or you're going to add that hydrogen or that hydrogen ions. Acids, which if you'll recall, acids begin with the letter H, like HCl, often pronate or donate that H plus ion towards the carbonyl oxygen. So right here is um, an example of something that you might start seeing in college. These are called mechanisms where the nucleophile that's negative attacks the carbon, which then makes the oxygen become even more negative and attracted to hydrogen, which makes this bond be formed. Physical properties of aldehydes and ketones are based on that polarity of the C to O bond. 
They're going to boil at higher temperatures than the alkanes and ethers of similar weight because they have polarity in that carbonyl group. But they're not as high as the alcohols because they do not have hydrogen bonding. So if you look down here, here are the, there's the aldehyde and there's the ketone. And you can see that their boiling points are very um, similar to each other, 49 and 56. Now these are an aldehyde and a ketone with similar molar masses. This uh, aldehyde, remember the carbonyl group is on the end, it's terminal. There's the carbonyl group in between. But you can see here that the boiling point is much lower than that propanol because remember propanol has this guy, the hydrogen bonding. And that hydrogen bonding makes high boiling points. If we look here, here's the ether, and finally here's the alkane with similar molar masses. They have much, much lower boiling points. More physical properties are that low molecular weight aldehydes and ketones are soluble in water. You probably could have predicted this to happen because we know that like dissolves like. So these guys are polar. And because it's polar here, they will get involved in an intermolecular attraction between water's very polar self. But if we add a whole bunch of carbons and we have something that is a high molecular weight, then it's going to be more nonpolar than polar and it will not want to bond with the water. In addition to that, I want to point out here that the aldehydes and ketones do not form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. So they don't form hydrogen bonds with each other, but they will hydrogen bond with water. Because again, they're very polar. So they will pull those electrons um, and get into bonding with water's very positive side. Now, continuing along with oxidation, aldehydes oxidize more easily than ketones. They lose the hydrogen attached to the carbonyl carbon, and because ketones lack this hydrogen, they are more resistant to oxidation. So aldehydes are easily oxidized to carboxylic acids by about any oxidizing agent. I want to show you here that this notation is telling us that this aldehyde is being combined with some sort of oxidizing agent. That's going to be something that's going to donate an oxygen. Um, remember, in oxidation of carbon, it means that we, we basically get more bonds towards oxygen. Now, that's not why it's called oxidation. Because if you'll recall, um, Leo the lion goes grr, or I learned oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Well, in oxidation, this carbon here is going to lose its share of the electrons. And when it loses its share of the electrons, it means that these oxygens gain their share of electrons. But it just so happens that in organic chemistry, oxidation means that you're adding another oxygen. Now let's take a look at why aldehydes are much better at that than ketones. If you were to have a ketone, you would have an R group on this side and it would not be able to be oxidized, oxidized as easily. So an aldehyde turns into a carboxylic acid. Now, both aldehydes and ketones in the opposite direction are reduced to alcohols. Reduction is the opposite of oxidation, or reduction is a gain of electrons. Reduction occurs with hydrogen as the reducing agent, hydrogenation with a catalyst, nickel, platinum, palladium, shows that you can add hydrogen in. So reduction is again when this carbon is going to gain more electrons. If you look here, 
Now it's attached to a hydrogen. It's winning the tug of war, so it has more share of electrons. So you can see that an aldehyde or a ketone um, is reduced into an alcohol. And whether that's a primary or secondary alcohol is something that you can look at specifically. Aldehydes will be reduced into secondary alcohols and ketones will be reduced into primary alcohols. And that's about it. That's all the notes. And now you can do the worksheet entitled Ketones and Aldehydes.